let me introduce Eduardo Diaz de Guajarro. He is currently based at the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. There he is the coordinator of the History of Exact and Natural Sciences faculty program. Uh, his researches have been focused on the history of science, technology, and scientific methods. In fact, his latest books are Exactas in Imágenes, published in 20, 2011, and uh, Espíritu Crítico y Formación Científica, published in 2010. And uh, he also the editor of the University History Bulletin La Mensula, and, uh, well, today he is going to talk about uh, uh, the government of Argentina university system in the central decades of the 20th century. And in presentation, he is Argentinian universities at mid-20th century to conflicting models and an unfinished project. Uh, okay. Uh, Mario? Si, dovevi andare la PowerPoint sullo schermo? Just a moment, there's some. Let's wait for the technical assistance because <laughs> who was supposed to be here, but it's. 20, 25 minutes, because we have some more time, because, you know, because uh, it's missing, okay, so. Okay. In my paper, I compare uh, two different university models about mid-20th century in Argentina. Something is going wrong here. Okay. Okay, now. It's fine, it's working, okay. Okay, now it's fine. Uh. Uh, it was off. Okay. <laughs> Um, both models were um, very different. The first one during um, Perón's government, Juan Domingo Perón was Argentine president between 1946 and 1955. Uh, the other model was after um, Perón's government between 1955 and 1966. Um, both periods were very politically unstable with many military coups and changes in political situation in Argentina. So it's a very interesting period to be analyzed uh, from a political point of view. But in, in both cases, universities had a um, some uh, uh, consolidated models different from one from the other, but uh, during all that period, governments changed uh, and uh, the situation was very complex. So I will try to simplify the, the speech so to be understood uh, the situation inside the universities. Um, in Argentina, there were not private universities during that period. All that I say is about public state universities, national universities. There were, in the beginning of this period, there were about uh, five universities in the whole country. At the end of the period, uh, I think uh, seven or eight in 1966. All of them national universities. Uh, to understand the period that begins in 1946, it's important to note the, how that period began. Uh, it began with a political coup, a very um, right, um, a almost pro-Nazi coup, military coup, in 1943. The, the militaries uh, overthrew government and 
all universities were taken over. Uh, the, um, for example, in the um, elementary school was imposed the Catholic religion teaching and the um, education minister was a very um, traditional Catholic man during uh, 1943 to 1945, approximately. Many professors, many university professors claimed for the return to democracy, but they were dismissed and also students um, pronounced in the same way, but um, for example, in the, the um, second photograph is um, during a student's strike in 1945, students occupied the university premises, but were um, harshly crushed, you know, with uh, in one student death also. During that period, Juan Domingo Perón, that was a, a military general, uh, was a labor secretary. And uh, he promoted lower class sectors, and then he got the working class support. There is a photograph of Perón with many workers. Um, that was a, an important contradiction of that government. It was a right-winged government, but Perón had a policy to favor uh, workers. Um, for example, many labor laws, um, improve of wages, uh, construction of schools, hospitals, cheap houses. So um, he um, obtained the support of all working class and in 1946, he was elected as president. He was re-elected in 1952. During all that period, Perón uh, had a, a general policy to favor uh, workers and working class, also in education. Uh, I quote uh, Perón, he said, I believe that no work can show a most democratic nature than making the access to higher studies available to the lower social classes. Universities should be open to those that deserve it for their intellectual merits, even though they don't have enough economic resources. Capacity and not money will be the key to science for all citizens. Um, but Perón has had an authoritarian conception of teaching. Um, there is another quote from Perón's words, the educator must teach his science and the pupil must assimilate it, throwing politics out of universities. Um, student, students opposed to that policy. So during all Perón government, students opposed the, uh, that uh, government's policy. In the universities, it was a permanent conflict because of the authoritarian policy of Perón on the universities. In Argentina, um, there is, it still is at the present time, a tradition that began in 1918 with a student movement called the Reform, the Reforma in Spanish, uh, that uh, began in University of Córdoba in 1918. Um, 
at that epoch, uh, the students opposed um, clerical and very traditional ways of teaching in Córdoba. But from 1918 on, that tradition of democracy inside the university was very strong. So reformists, the students that um, maintained the tradition of the reform, opposed that centralized and authoritarian policy that Perón held. In 1947, um, the, a new university law during, we are during Perón's government, uh, that university law was a, very, was a very centralized model. Rectors are, were appointed by the President of the Republic. There would be no student representation in the faculty councils and union and political activities were banned. All these uh, statements are the opposite of the reform tradition. The reform tradition sustained the autonomy, the um, representation of professors, students, and graduates in faculty councils, and uh, intellectual and political freedom in the university and free unions and political activity. That was the 1919 reform tradition. Perón opposed to that tradition and imposed a very authoritarian model and centralized model. Perón assessed that he would build three university campus in a year or two, but that promise was not carried out. Um, the, the only um, policy that was applied was the authoritarian conception of education, but uh, no new buildings, no improvement of budget, so the, many of Perón's words were just words, promises, but not facts. Here in the photograph you see Ricardo Guardo is the gentleman on the left, is the author of the university law with Eva Perón, wife of the president. From 1950 on, university access was free of charge. Till that time, uh, there were fees. Um, from 1953 on, entrance examination was removed, but university premises were not sufficient for the growing student population. Many left without finishing their careers. Um, university population um, grew by uh, threefold in a decade is the same tendency as in the rest of the world after uh, World War II. But the premises were the same, the budget was the same, the professors were the same, so this, um, the consequence was a very high dropout of students. The student movement continued opposing to the authoritarian policy and very, was very um, hardly crashed. In 1954, there, were a, a general, there was a general student strike and many activists were put in jail for, for up to six months in Buenos Aires University. Well, in 1955, there was a, another military coup that overthrew Perón. 
Um, it, it is interesting to see that the, um, that military coup was supported by a, a very great um, variety of political parties and sectors, from right-winged parties and the Catholic Church, but also by several leftist sectors and the middle class, all student movement and intellectuals were against Perón because of his authoritarian policy. Uh, it's interesting to note that in Buenos Aires University, that is the, the biggest in the country, students occupied the university premises and imposed a new rector that was a um, socialist historian, Jose Luis Romero. Um, students occupied the premises until government accepted the name of the imposed rector by the students. Then that student movement with um, also the participation of many professors um, restored 1918 reform principles, autonomy from national government, public selection processes for, for professors, a, a collegiated senate, professors, graduates, and students, and free student unions. Uh, this is an example, but it's um, an emblematic example uh, Rizieri Frondizi was the rector of University of Buenos Aires, the biggest of the country, between 1957 and 1962. I mention him here because to compare with Perón words about the promise to bring university to poors, to the working class, Rizieri Frondizi, a socialist also, um, he stated to build, he called to build a university for all the Argentinian people without resigning to most rigorous demands in the order of culture and science promotion. Here, not only is mentioned the um, uh, linking the university to the people, but also emphasizing the science promotion and the culture promotion. Also, new statutes stated that university is concerned about social, political, and ideological problems, but it studies them scientifically. So university is autonomous from political government, but is also concerned with political and social aspects of life. During that period, scientific research and innovative pedagogical experiences were stimulated. Also, it uh, was introduced the department organization, um, not in all faculties, but in most of them, because inside the University of Buenos Aires, uh, there were also uh, different positions about this new model, new auton uh, autonomous model and the reformist model. Some faculties were um, uh, it imposed all these in innovations as in science faculty, a philosophy faculty, and in other ones, not so much. Where there were introduced some new careers, sociology, psychology, and something for me very important is the foundation of the University of Buenos Aires University Press in 1958. Eudeba, in eight years, published 12 million books at very low prices. Um, the, um, uh, 
you see there libros para todos. That means books for everybody. Um, they um, wanted to sell books, one book at the price of one kilogram of bread. That was the price of a book. Uh, so that was, a, a, for me, a very important cultural diffusion policy. The, um, I think the most important thing done in that epoch. Uh, also, many um, research institutes were created as the Institute of Calcul, with the first scientific computer in Argentina, I saw that wall is a, a valve computer, the first so big in Argentina. And that is a stand in, of Eudeba in the streets of Buenos Aires. Um, that is not a newspaper stand with Eudeba books. That is an Eudeba stand in the streets, railway station, metro stations. That was a diffusion cultural diffusion policy of that epoch. Well, during the, this period, the reformist period, uh, most student activists were socialist, communist, and moderate Catholics, but um, it was a confrontation also with uh, right-wingers and some not very important, but existing um, neo-fascist groups that opposed all these innovations and this cultural and democratic policy. Uh, this period ended in 1966 with another military coup that overthrew President Arturo Illia and took over the universities, driving to an end the reformist period. The story this story follows until the present, but my paper ends here. So, uh, this is the comparison. Peronist University between 1946 and 1955 were highly centralized and dependent from political power, with restrictions to ideological freedom and preeminence of liberal careers. That model resembled the 19th century imperial French university. The, remember, the rector was appointed by the president. Professors were all, also appointed by the president. Uh, the council members were appointed by the president of the republic in this uh, Argentinian period. In the second period, reformist autonomous, 1955 to 1966 model, had elements of German 19th century scientific university promoting research and ideological freedom, but liberal careers continued prevailing. I put here that in this period, uh, there were elements of the German uh, 19th century scientific university, not the whole university, in some faculties. In both cases, um, the intention or to link university with poors was claimed, but in neither case it was really um, obtained that, um, that objective. No? In neither case, claim to link university to social needs was reached. Both periods were short. The 1955 to 66 was um, a, a, a very rich period in university sense, but it also was uh, so short that it, uh, the, um, the claim was not reached. Um, social, student social composition continued to be mainly from medium and higher social sectors. So the project of linking university to lower classes was unfinished. Well, that's all. Okay, well, we are seeing that some elements are emerging from a comparison 
between among the the, um, uh, the models of governance we are analyzing, uh, for example, what the uh, interaction the, the um, between the concepts of centralization and autonomy, uh, the diffusion of some elements of administration of uh, um, uh, the 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 social role, for reshaping the social role of universities, such as the introduction of departments uh, and the new role for professors, the new role of university in societies, even in uh, countries such as Argentina, where the political implications of university, of university policies uh, were strongly influenced by political instability, even violent political instability. But, uh, well, we're going to talk about it in the discussion. Now we have a first coffee break of almost 10-15 minutes.